Um, you know, in, 2020, in 2019, you know, I had high hopes, you know, after winning the mayor's race in November 2019. We had high hopes to continue the celebration and to continue to do things like this, to come together where we can all smile, laugh, and enjoy and celebrate our achievements. Um, we know that shortly after the ball in January of 2020 that COVID hit, and COVID hit us hard. COVID um, hit us hard with shutdowns, with education loss, you know, our, our kids weren't able to go to school. I um, mean, in the death toll, really paid a, uh, a big part on, and just hit us all. I think every single one of us in this room and across the country and across our world uh, experienced the death toll and, and how that affected us, um, each as individuals in, in our community. to overcome that, you know, I like to think of myself as the as being overly optimistic, you know, overly excited, you know, looking past our, our shortcomings or our hard times, and to be overly optimistic and always looking towards the future to see what the possibilities are, what does the future hold. And planning and having that vision is one of the opportunities, is really where COVID led me. You know, I remember sitting in, the, in my office as mayor, questioning, you know, why is this happening? Where, we, where do we go from here? Um, why is this happening to me? <laughs> it was like, we just ran in such a successful campaign. We all came together to celebrate, and now we can't even get out and talk to each other. We can't get out to celebrate, we can't shake hands, we can't start doing plans, but that was a time of reflection also. It was a time to sit back and really focus on what our true needs were. And as a leader and as the mayor of Newcastle, it was a time for me to sit down, slow down, because I was very, very excited, <laughs> um, running to Washington, D.C., to Harrisburg, uh, running all around the community, trying to have, I think my schedule back then was every single day, every hour, every 15 minutes, we had something going on. And that passion stayed with us, but it allowed me to take some time to step back and reflect on what our true needs were. And prioritize for our future, reorganize our plans, focus on restructuring, both internally in City Hall and externally throughout the community. To really take some time to reach out to uh, other leaders in the community, other community groups, to spend time hearing their voice. What are your needs, the church, our school district, our police force, our fire department? Really took a lot of time to chart our path for the future. I remember my, my desk, I had a long desk in my office or a table in my office. And you hear, we always heard so often that, you know, the city had numerous plans and we had to dust them off and figure out. We had them all laid out, all 35 of them. <laughs> we had them all laid out. And the goal was, again, to consolidate and to reorganize those plans so we can chart our path forward. And through all that, I began to recognize more and more what was going on. And it's not just locally, but all across the state, all across the Commonwealth. 2020 went on, we were able to organize, and we had many achievements, many, many achievements. You know, what we, what we, obviously we had a lot of rough patches, some growing pains, you know, with the administration and council, but there was many achievements that we also accomplished because of that, that ability to focus and to organize our plans. Two years, you know, we came in, I came in and with a three-year exit plan. And our three-year exit plan through Act 47 basically showed that we were doomed. We were doomed for years to come. Even for our three-year exit plan, we were doomed in 2024, 2025, where taxes and, and deficits and population laws um, we're just going to continue to, to unfold. Um, hopelessness was going to continue to overtake 
each of us individual, our community, the culture in our community, the negativity. And as a, as a leader, that bothered me. That really, really bothered me. And I cried out to the state on, through email, through text message, through phone calls, advocating for us to, to have a much more positive message, right? I can't show this to the people in Newcastle and give them hope. I can't show this to the people in Newcastle and incite positivity. We couldn't do that. So as my team and I sat down and we looked at our, our plan, we decided that's not true, but we're gonna do everything, everything in our power to overcome those projections and that doom that they put on us, which wasn't false. It's again, from an analytical standpoint, that's what they, that's what they, that's how they saw it. But it's what, what did we believe, right? And that's why, that's what did we believe is what was actually gonna come true. So our accomplishments, not raising taxes, our accomplishments, building relationships, right? Being able to work with our elected officials on different levels of our local community and the county and regionally. Eliminating barriers to business growth and opportunities where we eliminate our business privilege and mercantile tax. You know, bringing in new resources to spur entrepreneurial growth in the community. Those were accomplishments. At a time when, again, in COVID, when things seemed so hard, you know, it was so hard to fathom that we were gonna get out of this successfully. I remember telling my team, listen, I just attended an event or I was on a Zoom call and everybody said the same thing. We're all talking the same language. That was an accomplishment. That was a motivation, motivation to me to say the world, we're going in the right direction. And it continues to go on today. Today we're here again to celebrate or to kick off the 2022 race for Lieutenant Governor. I'll tell you a little bit more about why. I wanna tell you why, again, Going back to the first year of being mayor, it was disheartening. Disheartening, this, the lack of support that our community received from our state. As an elected official, I felt it. As a community member, I heard it from our businesses. As a father, I saw it you know, with a lot of our students and the pain that people were going through. And again, being on the phone and being on the calls and trying to get answers, there were none. A lot of the advisement was, oh, just, just hold on, you'll be okay, just wait. But again, we believe that after COVID, and that the reason for we had change in our, in our local government was because our community was ready for something spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't just sit back and wait for things to happen. We came together as a team and charted our path, again, to get out of COVID. Were the decisions that we had that I had to make and council had to make, were they great? No. They weren't favorable, you know, layoffs and cutting budgets and not spending at certain times of the year, cutting back. They weren't, they weren't great. But I have to tell you this, that again, the advisements from our state officials, some of our state officials, some of our state programs, they weren't favorable of that. And I recognize that as a mayor, that we can't go on as a community, if we don't come together 
and chart our own path. We have to make our decisions based on how we see ourselves succeeding, how we want our community to look, how we want our community to feel, how we want our community to think, believe. We set that culture. And that propelled me into today. <clears throat> I did extensive exploratory before this and I have not let, you know, other than individual conversations on, you know, why I made this decision. Back early 2021, I decided to, to, to look at it, it was kind of a, a seed planted by you know, some of my closest acquaintances and some folks out of Harrisburg, you know, a friend of mine in Harrisburg has just said, look at the Lieutenant Governor's position. And I started to look at it. And if you see over Facebook, I try to be transparent on where my travels are and what I'm talking to. I attended an event in, in Philadelphia where it was a public policy event, and this kind of turned that light on for me. When you're sitting in a room and we're talking policy, 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 and it just dawned on me that what we're talking about there isn't what's happening in our local communities. So I'm running for Lieutenant Governor to be that conduit between our municipalities and our state government. To be a representative of our needs to find those solutions to evaluate state programs to meet the needs of the people. Just like before with, with, with our local elections and our local officials, there's that constant tug of war that just pulls people apart. Me personally, I, I hate it. I dislike it. That's what keeps us from moving forward. That constant tug of war on a state level is spilling over into our communities. That constant tug of war is, is, is wasting taxpayers' dollars. That constant tug of war is not bringing solutions to our problems. That constant tug of war is not putting out a positive message on our state, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that with increasing taxes. We're seeing that with, with public safety. Communities like Philadelphia, communities like Pittsburgh, that are seeing record numbers of killings and, and, and murders and, and just completely insane amount of, of public safety violations across the board. And Newcastle is exempted from that. We still have our social issues. We have our drug abuse. We have homelessness. We have uh, poverty. As a state official, as lieutenant governor, I will make it a priority to address those needs and work with our local officials, our community members, on a grassroots, face-to-face -face plan to address those needs. To work with you, again, to be the conduit to the governor's office so we can take policy and put it into action we can take policy and base it on needs. We can take those policies that are created and it'd be a direct impact to us. And again, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I didn't have the help. We need leadership that cares. We need leadership that unites. We need leadership that's humble. We need leadership that respects the dignity and worth of all. I say it all the time. I'm not your standard politician. It says an uncommon man for a commonwealth for a reason. I can stand here and talk about all the political points that some of the governor and city candidates and even lieutenant governor candidates are talking about. Act 77, you know, I could talk about being pro-life I could talk about being uh, pro-choice or pro-life. I could talk about being pro-gun. I could talk about all of that. But I think for the vast majority of us who are living day to day, many living paycheck to paycheck, we're losing our, our kids to other states. We're losing our, 
we, our uh, businesses are leaving our communities. And there's a reason behind that. And just like as mayor, I'm gonna go find out why. We're gonna create an environment that is welcoming, that is accepting, that is attractive for people to stay, grow, and make Pennsylvania the quality of life state in the nation. So tonight, I also wanted to make this uh, an opportunity to challenge each and every one of you. We know politics can be a very uh, tough, cutthroat occupation. We know that it can be very costly. We know that there's strategies and that need to be put in place to make sure you know we get good leadership, humble leadership, leadership that cares and respects the dignity and worth of people. So I challenge, and I need support. I need your support. We defeated the odds in Newcastle. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Decades and decades of mismanagement, decades and decades of poor decision making, of doors being closed in people's faces. We defeated that. Come on. We defeated that. We need to we need to get to a point where we defeat that in Harrisburg. Yes. 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 Yeah. And that's why I'm running. We need to get to that point where we defeat that in Harrisburg and that our communities are well equipped with the resources and opportunities to help them grow. Yes. Yes. We're not out of the water yet. Newcastle, Marianne can attest to this, Teddy Sack can attest to this. We're not out of the water yet. But we celebrate our accomplishments, but we are not out of the water. We need resources, we need decision making on that level to, to come downstream to help our communities grow. You can't turn a blind eye to the people. We're here, we're taxpayers, we are working to make Newcastle, or to make the Commonwealth better. I don't know about you guys, but I had opportunities to leave, not just Newcastle, but also the state. 33 years old, friends of mine are in Florida, <laughs> California, <laughs> Vegas, living the dream. But I decided to the Newcastle, Pennsylvania, was my home. Yes. Come on. And I refuse, refuse, and fight the fact that, especially when people are, are negative about our community and our commonwealth. So we need your support to make this race bigger than ever. There's a lot of ground to cover. But we, I believe that we can continue, that I can continue to do that on a grassroots level. I'm not willing to compromise my values, faith, family, and community. Faith being number one. My family is very important to this. And then you all are the reason why. So share this message with your friends, with your family, with if you have folks in the, the eastern part of the state, donate to the campaign if you have the resources to do so. It doesn't have to be $100, $500, $1,000, it can be $10. Just support it. Because what we're experiencing here in Newcastle, we need to be experiencing all across the Commonwealth. I have nieces and nephews, and I have three kids. I don't want to see them and it grow up in the, in the same commonwealth that I'm in, that we're in now. I hope for better days. I hope for more opportunities, whether they're here in Newcastle, or they're in Scranton, or they're in Allentown, or they're in Erie, Pittsburgh, or Central PA. I'm an advocate for staying in Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania can be and will be, under my leadership, as Lieutenant Governor, the best state in America. Woo!
change hats because I'm also the MC. <laughs> <laughs> but truly, this is an opportunity for us to come together and be supportive of, yes, Lieutenant Governor, but it was also an opportunity for me to see you, for me to hear from you. So I don't take it lightly. This isn't an a, a opportunity for me to get up here and just toot my horn or anything like that. There's no boasting in this. It's truly, we need to hear from you. We need to hear from your communities, your churches, your families. What happened, again, the lieutenant governor's job, if you, if you read the news, if you study the position, there's been a constant battle between lieutenant governor and governor. My number one platform point when I was running for mayor was building relationships, and I hold, I hold to that to going into this, into this race. Whoever the governor candidate is, I want them to know that I'm, and I've told every single one of them that I've talked to, we need a plan. I want a plan that I can get behind, and I'll do the running and get it disseminated, communicated throughout the Commonwealth. So when you go to vote, you want to vote for the one who's going to take their platform and turn it into action. They're going to take their platform and turn it into action. No more fluff. No more political fluff. No more political platforms and, and flag waving. No more of that. We need to take action. So again, I charge you with that. And I'm very thankful for each and every one of you coming. This is the kickoff event. I'm excited. Um, I did want to give one more last piece. I know there's there's uh, there's been comments made, but I must remind you that when I ran for mayor, I had three jobs. I had the same family that I have now. You know, so I'm going to continue to be mayor. Yes. yes. I'm going to continue to be mayor all across the Commonwealth. Yes. So there's so nobody questions that I'm not here or I'm not available. But we're taking we're taking on the state. We're going to do bigger and better things, and we're going to bring resources back to not just this community, but communities all across the Commonwealth.